Yes. Yes. Soon. I will feed you. Ted? Ted, are you alright? Yes, Dave. Everything is fine. We are part of the blood cult. Hey, Ted, let's just talk about D&D blood magic. Is it evil? <laughs> Welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Nerdarchy Steve, and as usual, I'm joined by this nerd. Nerdarchy is Ted. You won't need blood magic to infuse your YouTube feed with D&D content if you hit that subscribe button. And if it's more Nerdarchy that you crave, make a sacrifice to that notification bell and never miss a single video. You know, Ted, you know, some of the inspiration we came up, before, uh, came up with for this video really makes me think of one of our sponsors. Could it happen to be Revenge of the Horde by Nord Games? Absolutely could. I mean, I could definitely see the gnolls using blood magic, or maybe you want to reflavor your gnolls as Canum, Canum from one of our favorite book uh, book series that kind of got us thinking about blood magic and, yo, using them with the hordes. Nord is our sponsor. They have a Kickstarter going right now for Revenge of the Horde, and it is this awesome line of miniatures that goes along with the Revenge of the Horde monster book that they came up with several years ago. It's a great book. It looks awesome on my shelf. I backed the original Kickstarter. So I was super excited to see this one come out. I can't wait to see the miniatures on the table. Uh, you know, you get your orcs, your goblins, your ogres, your hobgoblins, all the goodness. Uh, Ted, how do you feel about these minis? So... Right off the bat, you know, there's a lot of sculpts that I think are, are, are awesome. You know, if you want to dive all in, if you're like me and you like the minis, there's a there's an all-in pack that gets you, you know, you know, 30 miniatures for $50. That's a great price right there. And that's 30 different minis. Uh, the price point on that is spectacular as far as I'm concerned. But, you know, it's a this is a great way if you're looking to just bolster up your armies, uh, you know, you know, for, for, you know, just your tabletop role-playing games, you know, you can get just a squad or a war pack of goblins, of orcs, of, of ogres. Like, all of this stuff is designed, you know, straight so that you can get the things specifically that you're looking for. Uh, this is not one of those, oh, I want to go buy this one mini or that one mini. You know, this is getting your horde, getting your, your, your group there. And like I said, you know, the, the price point can't be beat on these minis. And when you combine that with these fantastic sculpts, it's really a no-brainer. If you're into minis, you should really be looking at this Kickstarter. First you get the Horde, then you get your Revenge. There's a link down in the description below. Go take a look. So with that, let's talk about Blood Magic. Dude, what is Blood Magic? Uh, so, you know, you know, as Dave mentioned you know, earlier, you know, there was a, a book series that we read by Jim Butcher called Codex Alera. Uh, once you get a little bit deeper in, you wind up learning about this this race of wolfmen, and their magic is done through you know the the use of blood. And we're not gonna you know give you more spoilers than that, but you know blood magic you know you see throughout you know movies and novels where somebody is requiring the sacrifice of blood, be it yours, be it your you know your enemies, however you want to do it. Blood is a spell component. Of casting these spells. And let's face it, blood really represents life force for the most part. So, uh, but blood makes it really thematic. Uh, so then next up, like if we were going to do blood magic for 5e D&D, you know, who do we think could use that blood magic? Well, I mean, that's one of the things that I think is fantastic about the setup of 5th edition is magic has been spread pretty much amongst all of the classes. I mean, you know, there's even some pseudo magic, you know, within a couple of the different, you know, barbarian subclasses. I mean, none of them are getting to cast spells, but everybody else gets access to some kind of magic. So depending upon how deep you want to dive, you could easily, you know, go, go and just say all of them. If you want to dive in a little bit harder and, you know, focus down... I think right off the right off the you know the the cusp, sorcerer you know they deal with bloodline, so they would be the pinnacle for me when it comes to who would get access to blood magic. Well, I mean, also a wizard tradition. I could definitely see a warlock doing this. 
you know, many of the spellcasters. But, you know, that's not all. Like, we have the feat mechanic where you can add a little bit to another class, which would be another way to do it. Um, which kind of brings us to the next question. How should blood magic work in, in 5e? We kind of discussed, like, pretty much anybody could do it. You know, there's there's reasons for any of the different classes to kind of have a subclass the way 5e is set up. But, you know, you can go even deeper. You can go deeper than just mechanics that are tied to a subclass or race. Um, we really like some of the mechanics in 5e that we feel like get underutilized. Uh, obviously, to me, the hit dice mechanic is something that just screams to be used for blood magic, right? Literally, hit dice is your life force. It fuels your hit points. It gives you back your hit points. And you can spend them in the game and you get them back. You get them back relatively slowly, right? Get half, you uh -huh. know, half as many back the next day that you spent. So, or maybe it's half as many back. I don't remember exactly which way, but it's a diminishing you, return. You can get up, up to half your, half your, half your level, your character level back, uh, you know, when you take a long run. So, uh, so, so the idea of having blood magic work via using hit dice would be really cool uh, if you didn't want to go with you know, straight up subclass features, you know, and you know, I will say that you know, I I'm a huge fan of Codex Alera. Uh, you know, we talk a lot on our videos and stuff about how much of a fan of Jim Butcher we are. And for quite a while, I have been toying around with wanting to actually make a, a full subclass, a full class for Fifth Edition based on you know this particular concept i i i haven't dived too deep i've been kind of stuck with you know getting a third subclass to to really narrow it down but uh you know once i do that is something that uh, is you know possibly going to be uh you know on the nerdarchy store well then you know that the question then becomes you know what do you folks think do you think it should be subclasses or should it be its own class in its own right should it be its subsystem? Because like I said, I, you know, we could tie it to hit dice. We can tie it to feats. We could have specific spells that are blood magic spells that kind of work a certain way. But then when you add your hit dice to it, it changes the effect. It makes them more powerful. Could you use the inspiration mechanic in there somewhere? We have a lot of different mechanics we could toy with. Uh, but before we get to that, you know, before we go any further, also we should ask the question, who supplies the blood? Uh, and that's that's you know part of the uh, you know the divergent paths that you know you have to look at. I mean, technically, you know, blood is blood. You know, whether it whether it be sacrificed, you know, forcibly taken, or whether it be willingly given, you know, those kind of things have different impacts and could potentially you know be something that you know has mechanics, it has rulings, you know. Should my blood that I, you know, that I sacrifice for the spell at the time of casting, or whether I put, you know, your blood that's willingly given in jars, you know, should that have any difference of an impact? I wouldn't think so, but, you know, possibly. Uh, you know, what if you, you know, kill an enemy and you take it, take its blood? Does that have a difference? So, like, you know, throughout the, the novels... That was part of the, the undertaking. That was part of, you know, the discovery of how this magic works because it wasn't the normal magic of, you know, the, the, the people that are native to, you know, the main character's homeland. You know, so as you kind of explore the system, it, that is things you, you know, you really do have to ponder and question. Well, when asking the question of who supplies the blood, uh, it kind of leads us back to the title of the video. D&D blood magic, is it evil? That's what we asked, right? If you're if you're a cutter, you cut yourself and that's how you fuel it? Probably not. It's probably okay, right? Not a big deal. You've made a choice. If someone willingly sacrifices their blood to the cause of your magic, then again, that's a gift of sacrifice. Not really evil. It's actually, one could say, it's virtuous. Right. The, then the, the, but finally, if you're taking the blood of someone unwillingly, and using it against their intent and against their will, probably evil. Uh, so, 
you know, blood magic could very much be a magic of intent, right? And mm-hmm. like when we're looking at subclasses, whether it's for a blood mage character class or subclasses for other things, we might like that might be a design element. Well, what what is the magic's intent? Is it a magic of taking? Is it a magic of giving? Is it a magic of self-sacrifice or is it a magic of sacrifice of others, you know, which would be willingly? Or is it, you know, like we said, this thing that consumes and takes and it doesn't actually care? Does the blood have to be fresh? You know, can you take it from a corpse or no? There's no more like the life has left the body. Therefore, that life force is not as valuable anymore or maybe has no value for casting the spells. These are all things to take into consideration. What do you guys think? You know, the, the other thing is, you know, um, you know, what what beyond, you know, taking it forcibly from an enemy, like the the book series talks about, you know, taking it from, you know, beyond just a living creature, creature, it has to be a thinking being that provides the blood. So like you couldn't just be like, okay, well, I'm butchering a cow, so I'm gonna take, you know, the the blood for my magic and the meat to eat, and you know, everybody wins. You know, that that doesn't fit the criteria for, you know, the series, but how would that fit for, you know, for, for this kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, again, it comes back to the idea of it being magic of intent. And also, uh, I don't think the animal won in that scenario. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, does it require that the creature has a soul or a spirit, right? So there might be these other things that are tied to it. it I mean, it's a great thing for us to discuss down and blow. Uh, hey, do you want another video on D&D magic? Then check out the most evil magic item in D&D, the Book of Vile Darkness. Another place Nerdarchy is creating magic is over on Patreon. Over there, we create new spells, magic items, even subclasses every month in our Patreon rewards. But that's not all we do. We do weekly patron-only live chats, monthly giveaways our patrons are automatically entered in, and more. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.